All right. What's up guys? So today I'm gonna to be starting off the first of a gear series that I'm starting called the Gear of Tarkov, where essentially I find a piece of gear that's in the game and I try to clone that setup. I'm gonna be starting off this series with the Wartech TV 110 rig, which is a setup that's in the game and is all available on Gray Shop. So big thank you to Gray Shop for supplying all the kit for this kind of loadout video, where essentially I found all the pouches that are in the game and you know all the pouches are available on gray shop so i literally cloned the setup that is in the game and you know in this video i'm going to be talking about the kit itself along with what's it like to actually run this kit you know both at the range and at airsoft check but before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Sightmark. And I know Sightmark is a cheap optic, but hey, maybe it's all you can afford. Maybe, you know, you're a kid that just wants to protect his community. And you know, a Sightmark optic is all you can afford. So that's what you pick up and you can still definitely do some work with it. So go check out Sightmark and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Also make sure to go check out Slate Black Industries. Use code BJO10 for 10% off some sick MLOC grips and accessories. So to start off with the kit itself, the Wartech TV-110 is a plate carrier made by Wartech. They are a Russian kind of tactical gear company. And of, of the different kind of like Russian gear companies I've dealt with and have tested before, Wartech seems to be kind of some of the more forward thinking designs where they're not just like cloning a design from you know elsewhere in the world. I've tested a, another plate carrier of Wartex, the TV-115, which is their slick plate carrier. And I found that to be you know really good quality. Haven't had any issues with that. So you know going with the TV-110 rig for this kind of Tarkov gear review was an easy pick for me because A, of the kits in the game, the TV-110, how it's set up in the game seemed kind of closest to what, how, like how I would set up my plate carriers in real life. Even now there are a few things on this that would definitely change. But as far as the plate carrier itself, um, you know, it seems of really good quality. I haven't used it as long as I've used the TV-115, but you know, if the quality is pretty much the same, I have no doubts that this plate carrier will last me a long time and kind of stand up to the rigors that I put it through. And another reason is it's kind of like reminiscent to me of a JPC. And, you know, I think that the TV-110 is sort of like the JPC, but for AKs, um, mainly because of the kangaroo pouch that it comes with. Because like the JPC comes with a kangaroo pouch right here, where you can put different mags in here. And I have found that this kangaroo pouch versus the JPCs is much better suited for actual AK or AK mags because when I've tried to put AK mags in the JPC's kangaroo pouch, I don't know, they just don't feel like they fit in there as nicely because I don't know if you can see in here, like the material in between the cells seems like it's a little bit thicker and doesn't snag up as much as the JPC's because AK mags do have this little lip right here. So I found that this kangaroo pouch right here works really well with AK mags. Uh, you can run 7.62 mags in these as well. You know, they're a little bit tighter and I would definitely recommend using the polymer steel reinforced um, uh, polymer mags for the 7.62. These are 545 mags, but same kind of idea. The polymer mags are a little bit more slim and you know, they fit into mag pouches better. So my favorite AK mags are the polymer Bulgarian mags. You know, there's other mags out there like the steel ones and then you kind of got like the circle 10 versions, but those are all kind of like fat and you know, heavy and I don't know, I just feel like the best bang for your buck when it comes to AK mags is going to be the polymer Bulgarian mags. But you know, they fit in here nicely. You could fit pretty much any AK mag inside these mag cells or these cell pockets right here. And you know, that's just one example of why I kind of think that this plate carrier itself is a little bit of a step up from the JPC, mainly for AKs. One thing I do have to state about this kangaroo pouch when you're running AK mags inside of it is it kind of makes taking this thing off and on 
a pain in the ass because with like the normal JPC when we're dealing with like AR-15 mags, you can lift this front panel right here relatively like unencumbered. But when you're running these AK mags, they get caught right here on the actual plate itself. Um, just kind of like a deal with leverage and it really makes it hard to kind of get inside of here with the cummerbund. Um, which is just a kind of a standard, kind of like a JPC style, kind of skeletonized cummerbund, um, as you can see here. But when you kind of reach in here, like it's really hard to kind of get that tight and exactly where you want it. I kind of wish that Wartech included a little bit of a handle right here. That way you can grab a hold of that thing and really get it in there. Cause right now, you know, you kind of have to take like, this is not very a comf uh, easy way to kind of adjust this thing. Kind of, you need to take out these mags if you really want to be able to kind of lift this thing up and get it exactly where you want it. Otherwise, you're kind of shoving your hand between two pieces of Velcro. It's just, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. So going to another thing I like about the Wartech TV-110 and how I think it's kind of a step up from the JPC is kind of the shoulder straps right here, including the shoulder pads, because the standard JPC kind of has a thinner, kind of more rubbery material when it comes to these, which are known to uh, tear apart and break. The Wartech is, seems to be of a more heavy duty nylon back here, as you can see, and it's a lot easier, in my opinion, to adjust. And the JPC comes with kind of suboptimal um, shoulder pads, in my opinion, as well, because those come with like a thinner kind of nylon covering versus the Wartech, what it comes with a rig are these really thick um, shoulder pads right here, as you can see. Though they're not super thick where it's really going to kind of encumber or make it hard to like shoulder your rifle. But I do like the shoulder pads that the Wartec TV-110 comes with. And kind of moving back here, so another thing I like about this plate carrier is the kind of the way that you adjust like how tight the cummerbund it is because and how I think it's a little bit of a step up from how the JPC is because it's very similar to a JPC in the way that you tighten this thing with uh, you know the bungee cords of the rope this one comes with uh, just kind of like a standard rope and I just find it a little bit easier to make this tight and where you want it than the JPC and I like how it is covered back here sorry I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes <laughs> but as you can see back here on the JPC, this is all exposed, but on the Wartech TV-110, it does have this nice flap on the back here to kind of cover that up. And you don't have a bunch of like exposed bungee cords on the back. Um, I'm still kind of more of a fan of kind of like what is more common on slick plate carriers, what has the Velcro and you can just kind of Velcro it on the back here and cover that up. But you know, of like the bungee cord kind of rope style, like adjustment style uh, kind of plate carriers, I do like this better than how the JPC is. And don't worry about this carabiner. This is part of like the clone of how it's set up in the game. I'm not really sure why you would put that there, but it's there for aesthetics. <laughs> so going into the pouches that I have on this plate carrier, starting off the front here, I have two uh, ANA tactical a single AK mag pouches right here. And then I have a little Wartech uh, pistol pouch, which I believe these are the correct pouches that are in the game. I looked them up on Gray Shop's website and they had these there and they looked the closest to what's in the game. And contrary to how it's set up in the game, this is the one thing I changed. This is right here and then this pouch is right here. But as a right-handed shooter, um, it just made more sense to me to be able to grab mags from like my left side versus having to come across here. I don't know, ergonomically, it just made more sense. That's the one thing I changed. Uh, I guess if I was a true, like, uh, Escape from Tarkov cloner, I would have this moved over here. But I actually do like the way that this is set up. I do like my mags, you know, easy to get. I don't like reaching back here for mags. Um, having them all right here and then in, you know, combination with the kangaroo pouches on here, uh, kind of makes it of a low profile, you know, uh, double stacked kind of situation here. And, you know, I do like having a multi-tool on me. I guess I could use this for a pistol mag, but I don't know. I just like this for a multi-tool. This is a Wartech, you know, um, pistol mag pouch. And moving over to the side here, have another Wartech pouch. This is their radio pouch. I do like the radio right here, especially if I was to run this at kind of like a Milsim game or something like that. I'm always fucking with my radio, you know, like going between the channels and having it quickly accessible right here just to grab out of this pouch versus something run kind of internal. 
Um, it just kind of makes it less of a pain in the ass to kind of deal with my radio. And, you know, like it there, it's fine. Um, kind of using from the radio right here, I do have this Disco 32 PTT. I've recently went from the Disco 32 adapter to run to a Peltor PTT, but I don't know, I was having some issues with that adapter. I've been through two right now. Um, so I just kind of went with the dedicated Disco 32 PTT for my Baofeng UV5R. Um, moving on to the sides here, I have two Wartec kind of a larger GP pouch and a smaller GP pouch. Um, I do like GP pouches. I think this is a little bit heavy on the GP pouch territory. Um, I do like this one where it's at. This one right here, I would probably actually swap out for a larger kind of like water bottle kind of carrier or pouch, like for a Nalgene or something like that, because right now this plate carrier doesn't really have you know, any water carrying capability, unless I'm running like a backpack or an assault pack, which honestly, if you're gonna go fight in that, it kind of sucks running around with a big backpack on. I would like to drop that to actually do my fighting in um, and still have an ability to carry a little bit. <laughs> We're getting, <laughs> the scabs are coming after us. Um, but the ability to carry a little bit of water on me just to sustain myself, you know, especially out here, you could see me sweating like a pig right now in Savannah, coastal Georgia weather. Um, you know, it gets hot. Just standing here, I'm sweating. And you know, I drink a lot of water. So for me, having an ability to carry water on you is really important. Mm. Water. Moving towards the back of the plate carrier, um, as you can see, it's completely slick minus the stupid carabiner that's on the back. I'm not really sure why you would have a carabiner just randomly attached to your back like that, but I don't know, it kind of folds to the side. It's not too much of a hindrance. It's on there for the looks. Um, but, you know, a really good reason for this is, you know, to be able to carry backpacks. Um, you know, if I had a water bottle right here just for my personal hydration and then more water in backpack, and when it comes to fighting, you know, I could drop that pack, but, you know, I like the ability to actually be able to run a pack. It really, kind of heightens your ability, especially if you're out there alone um, and you don't have people around you to grab stuff off of your back, you still need the ability to get stuff inside of your sustainment load, like your backpack, your two-day pack, your rucksack, whatever it is. But you can run a rucksack with this plate carrier on. Overall, I don't think that this setup is super bad. You know, there are some other setups in that game where I kind of question, you know, some of the pouches of where they're set up and, you know, why would I actually run that in real life? But of the rigs in the game, I think the TV 110, um, if you were to clone it and to actually run it here at the range or you know, airsoft or something like that, um, you wouldn't be too bad off because you know the pouches are generally in a good space to get to. Um, the GP pouches, yeah, you can carry a bunch of stuff on you, like you know your keys and your wallet and you know your cell phone and stuff like that. But honestly, you know, going again. I wouldn't change where this radio is set up, but I would put like a like a Nalgene pouch right here. Um, and where I probably wouldn't put it right here is because it would kind of get in the way of my pistol draw. But you know, overall, not a bad setup. Would also take off the carabiner. There's really no reason to have that there, unless there's some reason I'm not sure of that the people over at Battlestate Games know of, not me. I think they put it on there to look cool, and I think that as well. But, you know, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at BlueGeneOperator, or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com, to find some cool shirts and merch, which helps support the channel. Also, make sure to leave a comment of, you know, the next piece of gear or, you know, set up from a game or something like that that you'd like to see me test out, you know, running here at the range or, you know, at the airsoft field. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.